Welcome to Dofus Time. In this video, we're starting a new series of Frigost dungeon tutorials. Today, I'm here to present the first dungeon of the second chapter of Frigost. That's right, we're visiting the Aspera Gorge, Snowfox Country. The Snowfox Dungeon is actually two dungeons in one. Although the first few rooms are shared between the two dungeons, at the end, you can choose one of two different outcomes. Your first option is to fight the Tengu Snowfox, a fight recommended for characters who are approximately level 170. Your second option is the Tingu Snow Fox, along with the Foster Fuji Snow Fox, which is recommended for groups of characters who are level 190 or more. In this Dofus Time video, we'll show you some tactics suitable for teams of eight. But as this dungeon is modular, it can also be completed by smaller teams. Okay, let's get started by introducing you to the different creatures that you'll be smashing through to get through the dungeon and their abilities. The Yokai Snow Fox is weak to fire and resistant to water, it has 12 AP, 3 MP, and 3 spells. Fur Below inflicts water damage based on the amount of HP the yokai has already lost. It is cast in melee with a range of 1. Furious, which teleports the yokai to an empty square with a range of 1 to 3 and inflicts fire damage in an AoE on all adjacent squares where it lands. And Flux, which automatically activates when a yokai is attracted, moved, or swapped. This spell changes the yokai's appearance adds 1 MP, and applies an effect to all characters standing diagonally to the yokai. It also increases the damage of allies for one turn, puts all enemies in a weakened state for one turn, and applies the blur state on the Tingu when the Tingu is positioned diagonally. The yokai is one of those monsters that isn't very scary at the beginning of the fight, but they gain power as you wear them down. So if you don't want to experience a fully buffed fur blow, make arrangements with your team to blitz and destroy the yokai as quickly as possible once it's time for it to die. With a yokai in the mix, be mindful of the placement of you and your allies. And if you avoid moving the yokai, your allies will thank you for being able to continue to use their weapons. The Maho Snow Fox is weak to air and resistant to earth. It has 12 AP, 3 MP, and 3 spells. Furlong, which attracts the target towards the Maho by 3 squares. Furball, which gives a lock and dodge bonus to the Mahu for three turns and all allies that are within re melee range of the Mahu. And Furnace, which steals HP with earth damage in an area of effect. This spell will also damage allies who are within melee range, so use the Mahu to help kill easier monsters that are weak to earth. The Mahu is not usually very scary for adventurers who are used to snow foxes, and he's also easy to isolate. Keep him at range away from the heart of combat and then attack him after you've disposed of his allies. If you want to eliminate him quickly, it's easy to do, but don't be leisurely about it and don't get overwhelmed. Once he's within the ranks with his allies, he can quickly become a real pain by preventing you from moving. The Suryo Snow Fox is weak to earth and resistant to air. It has 12 AP, 4 MP, and 3 spells. Furtive, which does air damage and applies an AP dodge loss debuff for 3 turns to an enemy target. Furbishing, which inflicts neutral damage and removes AP on an enemy target in melee range. The AP loss can be dodged. And Furniture, which applies the effect Ecoflip's Luck on the caster and allies adjacent to the caster for three turns. The Furniture spell is a double-edged sword. You'll love it in the first few rooms of the dungeon before it gets too difficult, but you'll hate it when you're fighting the Tingu and all your attacks are healing the enemies. But as with most monsters in this dungeon, the Soryo is most dangerous when it is in melee, especially due to Furbishing's AP theft, which can be an obstacle to victory. The Yomi Snow Fox is weak to water and resistant to fire. It has 12 AP, 4 MP, and 3 spells. Fox Roar, which inflicts neutral damage and removes 10 MP from an enemy target in melee. Furrow, which heals an ally in melee range. And Fulguration, which is automatically activated when a Yomi takes damage from a weapon. This spell changes the Yomi's appearance, gives it a healing buff, applies the Fulguration state to all enemies and all allies positioned linearly to the Yomi, and increases erosion damage taken by enemies in linear position to the Yomi by 20%. By itself, the Yoma is not too bad. His attack spell doesn't pack a lot of punch. Put one in a group of snow foxes, however, and you have a more dangerous situation. Its Fox Roar spell will immobilize you while the Yomi uses Furrow to heal its allies. Use Line of Sight to keep it away from its allies if you notice that it's healing too much. Also, beware of hitting this monster with a weapon. Additional erosion can be devastating if ignored. If you're far away from the heavy hitters, it's not such a bad problem. But if a powerful monster hits you while you have 30% erosion, your hit points will be gone before you know it. 
The Kami Snow Fox is weak to earth and neutral resistant. It has 12 AP, 5 MP, and 3 spells. Foulette, which increases a random characteristic, strength, chance, agility, or intelligence, by between 500 to 700 for everyone, allies and enemies, for two turns. Wheel of Fortune, which buffs the caster's damage by either 25 or 35, but at the cost of 20% of the caster's life. All or Snuffing, which steals hit points in four different types of damage, water, air, fire, and earth, simultaneously. Underneath that pretty pink coat and perfect makeup, the Kami is a brute. She'll try to woo you by casting Foulette, which can sometimes work to your advantage. But don't forget about her Wheel of Fortune or All of Snuffing combination. It's even more deadly when the other monsters are in the mix, so make removing a Kami from the fight a top priority. This dungeon has two different endings. Either you can fight the Tingu, or you can go for the bigger challenge and fight the Tingu plus the Foster Fuji Snow Fox. The Fuji fight is more difficult, but the tactical strategy for both fights is essentially the same. One final note, your choice of fights should depend on your ability to deal damage and survive heavy damage. When you're ready, don't be afraid to try the Fuji fight, even if you're not level 190. And with that said, let's talk about the Tingu Snow Fox. When not protected by its invulnerability state, the Tingu is moderately resistant to all elements. It has 15 AP, 5 MP, and 7 spells. Frozen Wallop, which increases erosion on all enemies by 30% for one turn. This spell is cast at the start of the Tingu turn when it is in blurring state without the fulguration state. Mournful Sniff, which instantly kills an enemy in melee. The Tingu can only cast this spell when it is in the fulguration state without the blurring state. Refrigerated Hug, which attracts an enemy towards the Tingu by three squares. Foxy Lady, which is cast in close combat, does air damage based on how much HP the Tingu has already lost, as well as fixed amount of earth damage. The Tingu can only cast this spell when its invulnerability has been disabled. Crazy in Love, which summons a random Snow Fox dungeon monster. Frozen Malevolence, which adds 10 to 15% erosion to enemies in close combat and also steals HP with water elemental damage. Frozen Fleece, which changes the Tingu's appearance and removes its invulnerability for four rounds. The Tingu only casts this spell at the beginning of its turn when it has both the fulguration and blurring state at the same time. As you can see, the strategy of this battle is based around controlling the blurring and fulguration states on the Tengu Snow Fox. Your goal is simple. Trigger these two states on the Tingu as soon as you're ready. And please make sure you are indeed prepared. If you miss and only manage to trigger fulguration, the consequences could be fatal for your team. As a reminder, you can trigger the fulguration state by positioning the Yomi linearly to the Tengu and hitting it with a weapon. If at all possible, you should try to trigger this state after you've already triggered the Tengu's blurring state by pushing, attracting, or transposing a yokai into a diagonal position to the Tengu. Perhaps you've already guessed, but this means that to win the fight, you will need these monsters on the field. So don't kill them right away. Of course, if you do kill them, it's not the end of the world, because the Tingu can summon a random snow fox, but this can be time consuming and increases your chance of failure. So we recommend keeping the yokai and the yomai alive until you don't need them anymore. Now, before you run off to try these tactics, let's talk about how to deal with the 500 pound pink gorilla in the room, the Foster Fuji snow fox. The Foster Fuji Snow Fox is weak to air and neutral damage. She has 12 AP, 4 MP, and 3 spells. Progeny, which instantly kills an enemy target in melee and replaces them with a random Snow Fox dungeon monster. Mother's Milk, which heals allies around the Fuji and increases their damage for two turns. And Furzy, which cast diagonally, increases the erosion of an enemy target for one turn, steals HP with water damage. Unlike the Tingu, the Fuji does not have an invulnerability state, so you can attack it early in the fight. And if you choose to fight the Tingu-Fuji combo, we advise that you kill the Fuji first. The fight takes place on a map where the monsters start at a distance from your team, with few obstacles between you. With teamwork, you should be able to hold the other monsters off while drawing the Fuji in for the kill. Now, as long as you avoid positioning yourself diagonally or in close combat with the Fuji, she's completely harmless. She won't attack you, and you can start driving down her hit points. The technique is simple. Isolate the Fuji, steal her MP, then attack from range or maintain enough MP to move away after hitting her. Now watch out for critical failures if you choose to attack in close combat with a weapon. But be careful! When the Fuji dies, all the other monsters in the fight will receive a huge damage buff. Stay out of their attack range for the turn after the Fuji bites the dust. 
Once the Fuji's been dealt with, the rest of the fight should proceed as described in the Tengu section. The main thing to keep in mind is to push back the enemies so they can only advance one by one and eliminate them individually to prevent becoming overwhelmed. Eliminate the Kami Snow Fox first, if at all possible. They'll be the most dangerous when the, in the heart of the scrimmage. Then trackle the Soryo to get rid of its furniture effect. As we mentioned earlier, a Mahu isn't dangerous when kept at range. If you have the opportunity, don't bother attacking it and focus on disabling the Tengu's invulnerability. The same principle applies to the Tengu summons. Unless they're posing a serious threat, try to push them away from you rather than wasting time and HP attacking them. After all, their life ends when the Tengu dies. As soon as you're ready to activate the two states, go for it. The Tengu's vulnerability will last for four rounds, so you need to be prepared to dish out maximum damage. If you can manage it, keep resetting the states on the Tengu even before his invulnerability comes back. Because each time the states are present on the Tengu at the beginning of his turn, the Tengu will cast Frozen Fleece. This way, you can keep him vulnerable until he dies. While you're in the middle of this Tengu of Trauma, don't lose yourself and forget about Foxy Lady, which deals more and more damage as the Tengu loses HP. If your team has protection spells, use them during this phase of the fight or you may take major damage. Once the Tengu is dead, clean up the remaining monsters, which shouldn't pose much of a problem. Generally, the problem with fighting snow foxes is that many of them can increase your erosion debt. Keep an eye on the effects that have been placed on you and your team. Don't let one person take the brunt of all of the attacks, even if you have a healer, or else they may wind up with a maximum vitality that's too low to survive an attack. And of course, use AP and MP theft along with careful placement to reduce taking damage. Now that you know the Tengu strategy, let's review the classes and combos that could help you win this fight. Please take note, this is not an exhaustive list, since all classes have useful spells and tactics that can help you overcome the Tengu. We'll just try to isolate those who stand out the most in this fight. A Sakrier will definitely be a huge asset in this dungeon. They have many spells that are very useful for triggering a yokai's blurring state, like swap, cooperation, and attraction. It's probably the class that has the easiest time enabling the two necessary states in the same round in a Tengu fight. Of course, this class isn't necessarily essential to completing the dungeon. Many other classes have pushing abilities, like Yops, Inis, Srams, Kras, and of course there's also Release, which allows any class to enable the state, although it's a little less flexible. For a team that hasn't completely mastered the dungeon, a Sakrier can be a nice backup plan. Pandawas are also very useful. Even though Charcam and Chamrak can't be used to activate blurring, they can be used to manage monster placement for others to push or keep monsters at bay until it's time to kill them. Ranged attacks will also be useful for destroying those foxies at a distance, and there are many classes that could fit the bill. Inutroph, Sedita, Bribery, and Soothing Bramble are very useful in this dungeon too. Kra, Sram, Fekka, you know, there's plenty. To keep your team alive, you'll need protection, so don't hesitate to recruit a Fekka or Mass Grader, an Eni Ripsa or an Osmodus. And naturally, a class that can hit hard and often will help you get rid of recalcitrant monsters. All right, that's it for this Dofus Time video. I hope you found it useful for continuing your journey through the Island of Fergost. If you enjoyed this video, please let us know by liking, commenting, or subscribing to our channel. Video tutorials like this one require an enormous amount of work and time to put together, and if you'd like to see more of them in English, let us hear your voice. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon in another Dofus Time video.